Hi there, this is Chris Chaplin, the Camp Promoter Legends, here today to talk to you about an exciting new riding shirt from our Swiss friends at Roka. It's called the Richmond Riding Shirt. So this is the new Richmond Riding Shirt from Roka. Now, any new launch from Roka is exciting because unlike some brands, they don't produce a whole collection, 20, 30, 40 new pieces a year. They only release maybe three or four new items. So when something comes out, it's a bit of a big deal. This is classic Roka. It's a devastatingly good looking casual piece, but obviously it's designed to do the job on the bike as well. So let's go through it. Let's talk through it. The Basic design is a riding shirt. The outer material is 100% cotton flannel. And as you can see, it's in a kind of plaid design. In terms of the features, you've got um, a button down collar here. Obviously a button down collar means that if you're riding in this on the bike, it's not gonna flap around. You obviously have the option if you want to ride it open, if that's your preferred look. You've got a couple of patch pockets here. You've got a placket with buttons. This is a YKK zip, as we would expect from a brand like Roka. People will get bored, I'm sure, with me going on about YKK zips, but to us, it's an indicator that a manufacturer is taking their responsibilities seriously. It always costs a few dollars more to fit a garment with a YKK zip, but YKK zips tend not to go wrong. If you're a cheaper manufacturer and you just want to get the garment over the hurdle of the guarantee, then you save that money, you go for a cheaper zip, often they end up going wrong. We've had lots of experiences with brands that have fitted non-YKK zips and the whole production runs had to be redone. So always good when a brand has YKK. That's a YKK zip. Also here on the sleeve end, there's a set of poppers and also a zip. That means you can get a glove underneath it. So you open it up, you can put a glove underneath it. Also makes it easier to roll the sleeves up if that's the look you want, um, I would suggest off the bike rather than on it. In terms of these buttons, we have, these are all metal buttons with the exception of the top one and the bottom one. These are rubber buttons and the design here or the, the idea here is that this is not going to scratch your paintwork on your bike. Not quite sure why there's a rubber button at the top. I've never come across that before, but I'm sure Roka have some kind of reason for that. I think I've mentioned two patch pockets there. Another nice little feature is that if you're riding in hot weather, you know, this is a, it's not a heavy shirt, but it's a cotton shirt, it's a lined shirt, it's not a single layer garment. So if you want to make it more breathable here under the arms, you've got ventilation zips. Right. So that's another nice little touch. The other thing that you can't see from here, but Graham will come in and he will do a close up shot, is it's got a lowered back to the garment. Now that's particularly important, I think, with a shirt because most of the time you're gonna be riding this with a pair of jeans, it's not gonna zip into anything. What you wanna make sure always is that the, there's no gap between the top of the jeans and the shirt. See a lot of people riding like that, it's not very nice, it's gonna be cold. If you go down the road, it's gonna give you exposed skin that's not gonna be nice if it ends up sliding down the tarmac. So what we always like, like to see is a lowered back, and this has quite an exaggerated lowered back. It doesn't look strange on the street, but it's gonna make sure that it works on the bike. When you're sat on the bike, I think the tail of this garment is almost going to touch the seat, um, the seat itself. In terms of protection, first thing is armor. This is a, somewhat of an anomaly. Now, under EN 17092, which is the latest CE regulations, there are three standards. There's A, urban riding, double A, touring, and the highest level is triple A. This is a single A garment in principle, but Roka have had this approved to a different standard called the B standard. Now, without wanting to go into it in too much depth, the B standard is the same as the A standard in terms of abrasion resistance, punch resistance, seam burst, and so on, but it enables them to supply a garment without the armor. Now, Roka have decided to do this, I'm going to assume, for two reasons. One, they think that a lot of guys will be riding this shirt on the bike without the armor, because some people just don't like armor, and they've taken the view that that's going to be perhaps a reasonable percentage of the people who buy this shirt. The second thing is they may reason that some people are going to buy this shirt because it's a cool looking shirt and they're not going to ride on they're not going to ride 
in it on a bike at all. So for that reason, they can save the cost of including armor with it, enables them to bring the cost down. Um, I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I'm a little bit concerned at the way Roker have gone about this. But first, I just want to talk about the armor itself and what we would be doing. So it comes with no armor. Roker normally work with D3O. We would have no hesitation about suggesting that the armor you want to put in this shirt is the latest ghost armor from D3O. This is fabulous stuff. The armor that would normally fit into a Roka jacket would be a level one traditional D3O. This Go stuff meets the same level one standard, but it's beer mat thin, it's super flexible. Now, if you've got a heavy leather jacket, the armor, the weight of the armor doesn't always make that much of a difference, but the lighter the garment, the more obtrusive that armor could be. And in a shirt like this, if you had the normal armor, I think it could, as you're walking around, be a little bit uncomfortable. It's, you're certainly going to be, be able to feel it. And particularly if the armor pocket is not exactly where your elbow bends, then you could find that the armor is just a little bit uncomfortable. The beauty of this new ghost armor is that it kind of bends wherever your elbow bends, wherever your, your shoulder is, even if it's not quite where the pockets are here, you just won't notice where this armor is once it's worn. So this would be, without hesitation, the armor to put in this jacket. You've got it in. Once you've got it in, you won't feel it's there. You can walk around the street. You won't even know you're wearing armor. Obviously, it has a pocket for a back protector. We would recommend this piece, again, D3O. We all know D3O. It's lovely and soft as it heats up, particularly when you're wearing it. It takes the heat from the body, becomes even softer, then hardens on impact. This is a protector, it's called a T8, it's a medium size, that's the one we would fit, it's a level two. So if you're going to use this shirt as a proper, serious riding garment, then obviously you're going to want the D3O ghost in the shoulders and elbows and you're going to want a back protector. So let me come back to this issue of the safety standard, the fact that they've gone for a B level, which is in essence an A level. And I find this a little bit disappointing and I think what Roker have done, they've not fully bought into the whole CE regime. Their view is that they produce super cool gear and not everybody who buys the gear is bothered how safe it is. Now, that may well be the case in some markets, but certainly here in the UK, people understand the standard and expect to look at the standard as a way of telling them how protective a garment is. Roker, I think, have looked at it and gone, well, let's go for the minimum standard. That means we can legally sell it in any motorcycle shop in Europe. And that's fair enough. But this is not an inexpensive shirt. This is not a £50 item. This shirt without armour is £260. That's expensive in anyone's book. And I think that even the wealthiest of motorcyclists is going to want to know that for £260, he has a garment that's going to supply him with a good deal of protection. And as an A standard, you cannot be sure of that because the A standard, it's the urban standard, it's the lowest standard. It's for accidents that are designed to happen up to 30 miles an hour. And frankly, that isn't good enough. Now, I know this is not the kind of shirt that you're gonna go zooming down the motorway in, hopefully, at 80, 90 miles an hour. It's not that kind of garment. It is a little bit more urban in its focus. It's the kind of thing that you ride around on your cruise, you might, poodle around the, the back lanes and so on. But at that money, you want to know that you're still buying something particularly protective. And I'm pretty sure, because I'm going to go in a second, I'm going to go inside the jacket, we're going to look at the protective components. I'm pretty sure this garment would pass the higher level. So it's an A-level garment. I think it would quite easily pass the double A level. I don't think it would reach triple A, which is normally reserved for the strongest denims and leather. But I would want to have the confidence, if I were buying a shirt like this, the confidence of knowing that it was at least an AA level garment. And I'm hoping that in future, Roker will take a different view. They won't say, well, that's good enough. That allows, allows us to sell it. I want them to test at a level that gives buyers the confidence to buy into their clothing, not just because it looks super cool, but actually because it's gonna do the job on the bike. Anyway, in terms of the protective qualities and what goes on inside, this lining has a number of components. It's comprised, it's 60% cotton, but it also has Coolmax built into it. Now, Coolmax, nothing to do with the protective qualities, but it's a very 
highly breathable component. It's going to help this garment to wick moisture away from the body if you're riding in hot conditions. It's a polyester a cool max, and it's hydrophobic, which means it expels water. It doesn't like water. Unlike cotton, which absorbs moisture, cotton's the wrong thing to wear on a hot day because the long yarn fibers soak the moisture in and it stops your body from breathing. What you want is something that wicks moisture away, gets moisture away from the body. That's exactly what Coolmax does because it doesn't like to hold water and then it evaporates. So it's a very premium material that helps a garment breathe and vent and get rid of the moisture. The other thing that you've got in this You've got a little bit of elastane for comfort, so this is a nice, I wouldn't call it stretchy, but it's certainly a comfortable garment to wear. But you've also got a component of UHMWPE. Now, that's a fancy set of initials. It actually stands for ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. It's the super strong material that you find in a fabric like Armolith, which is what Roka uses in its jeans. Dyneema, which you may also have heard of, a carbon steel that's sometimes known as 15 times stronger than steel. That's also a UHMWPE. This garment has a UHMWPE. And it's what makes me think that this is a strong and protective garment. But as I've said, I just don't think that Roku are doing justice to it. So this garment, I believe, is super cool looking. I think it's more protective than the A classification would suggest. If you put good armor in, you've obviously got impact protection. It's going to be cool to wear because you've got the zips under the arms, you've got the cool max. It's a comfortable jacket. I think it's fabulous. It's not inexpensive. It's 260 pounds. By the time you've added 50 pounds for the ghost armor in the elbows and the shoulders, you're over 300. You're then in for another 50 pounds if you want a back protector, although there's a good chance you'll have a back protector at home that, that fits into this jacket. But bottom line is, this is a super cool jacket. It's, as I said at the beginning, it's typical Roka. Fabulous. So that was the Richmond riding shirt from Roka. If you want to see more Roka, then visit the website motorlegends.com. We are the UK's largest stockist of Roka, so we have loads of gear always in stock. Anyway, if you'd like to learn more about the Richmond shirt, then if you click on one of the links on the page, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you directly to the relevant page on our website. There, you can check the spec out in a little bit more detail, you can check on availability, and if you really like the shirt, then obviously you can order one there and then. Now, when you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on anything you buy from us, Returns are free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price guarantee in the business. John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. If the retailer is in the EU and not in the UK, we will match their price. Now, there are a few terms and conditions, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you visit the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to receive bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there within seconds, you'll be in business that you'll receive bulletins from us in future. If, however, you would prefer to get your information about new products videographically, in other words, in this form, then we would be delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this is 2020, and this year we are running a promotion to give away a bike that we are calling a Steve McQueen tribute bike. It's based on a Mutz 125cc machine. It's a little beauty. You can read more about it on the front page of our website or on the home page of our YouTube channel. But you need to be a subscriber in, or, in order to win it. We're going to be giving the bike away just before Christmas 2020. So if you want to stand a chance of winning it, as I've said before, click on the button below. Finally, I'd like to make a little play for our shop here at Guildford. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. The shop has a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds worth of merchandise arranged over three floors. Technically, this makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just about the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service, we're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have by far the best five-star rating in the business. When you come and see us, we'll sit down, have a chat with you. We'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper tea, proper Yorkshire tea, in a proper teapot. And who knows, you might even be lucky enough to get one of Sean's mum's delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.